Slop City Podcast! Oh, that's beautiful! I can. Whoa, that was a little too. Gotcha. That was a little too smooth. Gotcha. Okay, so this is uh, the um, weekly segment where we are. These. This is the weekly segment while we're on the road where we just kind of awkwardly position ourselves, um, figure out how much can we take <laughs> for the next hour. Can we take? Holding the microphone manually. This is like driving a shik- stick shift 24-7. This oh, is, this I is love like a stick shift. If you had to go and, you know, if you had to get up and walk, you're driving a stick shift. Huh? That's... Huh? <laughs> huh? Uh, 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 I don't understand. Uh, I'm just saying, that's what this is like. It's like if I had to... Doing the podcast on the road... Feels like that. If I was constantly driving a stick shift and having to manually do things, that's what it feels like. Doing the podcast on the road makes me feel like I, um. Look at Libby. She's delirious. (sighs) It makes me feel like, as Tina once said, your bathroom looks like you're in a mental institution. Dude, we gotta get, I'm gonna get a clip of the bathroom. (laughs) So that people can see what Libby's bathroom is. Let's just go through a play, but first off, let's clap. (laughs) Hold on, I'm not ready. I got to get it nice and balanced. That was it. Okay, so let's just go through the last few days as much as we can. What do you mean? Oh, the hotel fiasco. The oh, whole... God. Okay, so today is Thursday, May 4th. Ooh, tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo. And everybody knows that's the special day that we celebrate for the dead. To celebrate the dead. I thought it was the Mexican independence. <laughs> You're thinking of Dia de los Muertos. I am. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. Oh, I, God. I walked by these Hispanic women in the hall, and I said, Dia de los No, I'm joking. I did, would never do that. Did you hear the white guy out there talking? No. He goes, His name was uh, Steve. Mucho grande. I know Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, Caliente pollo. <laughs> no. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa buddy. Was it a, a a patron, a guest? It sounded like it because he sounded elderly. Oh, Christ. And she was like, uh-huh. Uh, no, that is that is terrible. That's like when people ask me if I'm a spy when they find out that I'm Russian. And I have to be like, that's so funny. Well, are you? <laughs> you do this every time I bring that up. And yeah, no, I'm not. Not you kind of slipped up there for a second and said, yeah, uh, no. I, know what, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I didn't slip up. Just think of the information that you're giving them. It's mostly about bowel movements, right. proper ways to come, um, about how to make sound checks and venues better in the long run. I mean, it's basically, they're not getting any good intel from me. If anything, they're like learning about how begrudgingly, how, how intense the this industry we're in is. And they're probably like, we don't care anymore it's like yeah she finally got that joke to work she's been working on for seven years and we have confirmed that that larger gal likes to fart a lot yeah we have confirmed that that larger gal (laughs) does that this is a russian guy going over our footage he's like okay so it looks to me like this big uh big big gal big lady big mountain (laughs) Big woman. The big mountain of a woman. She does this thing, and it seems to make everybody around her laugh. She does this thing where she lets fart out, and then she goes, hello. (laughs) (laughs) And then most people around her say, 
ha ha ha. But I don't understand the joke. It's not making sense to me. Except for other bigger gal who take a notebook and do this with it. To get, uh, what, I don't know what this is. To be honest, I relate more to the other bigger gal. (laughs) Not the one that's constantly <laughs> farting. I relate more to the one that picks the notebook up, says, "Hey, oh, get away. This one is who I really relate to. Because when I'm on subway and guy next to me lets out a little fart, I don't want anything to do with it. I don't, I don't want him to look at me. I don't want to giggle about it. I'm going to work. I am not here to laugh at fart on subway. What well, what is interesting about the data I am collecting is uh, <laughs> the data. The, the second bigger woman will get very angry when when the woman make noise with butt. But then when a large woman make noise with her own butt, she don't care. She's fine with that. So it's a bit confusing. Um Second larger woman. <laughs> also, I have noticed uh, last few months she has begun doing this dance move. <laughs> before every single event show they are doing with their skits, yes. uh, she does this dance. <laughs> A- and this one first big bigger girl. <laughs> they never call. They never call us by our names. They just, Chelsea's the second bigger girl. The second bigger girl, she does this dance, not looking good to me, but, you know, maybe my uncle, my uncle would like that. He is always dating these bigger girls and loving them. Listen, as you can see on the data profiles, I have this woman's names on here. One is Chelsea, one is Libby. You don't need to call the big girl and second bigger girl. Oh. You can refer to them as their names. Okay, I mean, that's fine. I guess I will. So is the second bigger girl Chelsea? Yes, that okay. is Chelsea. So here I am connecting data in my brain, letting synapses take over, <laughs> going second bigger girl. The second bigger girl is Chelsea. Yes. The second one. And the first big gal, bigger girl. The first one's bigger than the second, <laughs> you know? Everyone is so big. That's <laughs> what I don't get. Yeah. Everyone is so big in America. Well, I'm, I mean, it makes sense to me. I mean, look what these women are doing on this road trip they're doing. They're sitting. That's all. Sitting. Eating. Scrolling. Sit, Scre- screaming Gary, which I have found that small <laughs> little dog. The small little dog is very cute, very royal guy. To be honest, I think, I think that you know, so, I would like to have one of those once I become the upper echelon. Upper echelon. You will. KGB. You will not. You will not. You don't think so? You think no? I you will not stay a cat guy because like all you're doing is gathering this irrelevant information. This is no good to rush. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just telling you what I'm watching. You guys were one that said first bigger gal is a domestic threat. That was you, not me. You came to me with photo of first bigger gal in in McRib. McDonald McDonald's uh, wearing wigs standing out front. You came to me with that, Sergey. That is because we have implanted our spy, Tina Daibul, with these women. They're not doing anything that is harmful to country. Well, but that one Tina Daibul, she is Russian. Born, but I will say, we don't claim her. She is actually a disgusting... I mean, in watching, I can't even believe what I've seen. Yesterday, this girl... Let me tell you what she did yesterday. What did she do? She took a shower, had 20 minutes to get ready, and decides to pull out some kind of um, machine that looked like something on her vagine area. Yes. And... Put? She put? (laughs) She was putting... (laughs) Yes. Yeah. This is the woman that we have made for us to spy? Well, listen to this. Machine. <laughs> Machine dies. 
Oh. Machine dies as she's oh, oh <laughs> mm, doing these these sounds that my wife has never made. And honestly, glad my wife doesn't make these sounds because I, if I had to listen to this oh, oh would come if, so quick. Oh God, I just no, it would it's too much for me. I want quiet. I talk all day. I listen all day. I want quiet when I come home. Yes, I get. So uh, uh, when my wife put, I want quiet. <laughs> not a peep. <laughs> do not want to hear one peep. How's your day? I don't want to do it. Kak dila, get out of here. Srechna. <laughs> exactly. I am just so done with it. So, but so she dies. Machine dies. She just says, oh, fuck, and gets up. And goes to dinner? Goes to dinner, gets ready real quick. I mean, she was literally a one before she got ready. I say <sighs> she's a solid five now. So, I mean, uh, maybe this could be some kind of profile on how it is possible to be ugly but beautiful <laughs> at the same time. I mean, there is a look. Well, with these c recent cutbacks on spies and her being one of our better spies, I just don't see what uh, information they are providing to us. I will be honest, at this point, I don't see anything further to be reviewing them for. And I think that we can take off fat girl number <laughs> one <laughs> off of a uh, wanted list. Because I, it, to me, you know, I watch, I've studied that video multiple times. Mikarib yes. video, Carla, uh, Cooter, we learned what that was. Yes. Thought she was saying cougar. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. I was like, what do you mean you, you punched a cougar? She was uh, yeah, standing up for civil rights of America, but uh, there is no such thing as civil rights when it comes to McDonald's. I don't think so either. Turns out this was what is called satire. What's that? I don't know. Yes, see, maybe that's what we need to be figuring out. Is, is how can we get... You know, we need to get on their level of funny because that Paul Rudd is a good actor. I will say that. You have to practice make laugh. In it, which is difficult. So I try now. That's wrong. <laughs> this is how you sound. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, practice one more time. <laughs> wow, that felt so good to laugh like this. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, that was really good time. Well, um, I think that um, <clears throat> I'm going to be heading out. Uh, be heading? Who will you be heading, someone? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's funny. That's a funny joke. <laughs> oh, my God. I sound like clock. That's why I don't like to laugh. I sound like clock. Cl cl <laughs> what is that? You sound like a... Uh, you look you at a guy like me, you think I'm going to laugh like that? No way. No. I you think you laugh like this. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny, guy. <clears throat> so, no, no one's beheading. I was saying I think I will be heading out, going to talk to um, my next spy. Next door neighbor? <laughs> no, no my, my next spy. Who is your next spy? Um, my next spy is uh, husband of fat girl number two. His name is uh, Greg? Yes, but he is my next spy. I oh, he will be so good at it. Oh, I mean, he is just talking constantly. Quiet like mouse, moves like stealth ninja. Exactly, very quiet guy. So hopefully I can get him to chit-chat with me later. Good luck to you. I will stay here in office. <laughs> okay, thanks, Sergey. This was fun. Goodbye. <laughs> get out of office. <clears throat> what to put? <laughs> the fact that he they, they couldn't stop calling them fat girl <laughs> or bigger girl. Even though they knew their name. Second bigger girl. Second bigger girl. Oh. <sighs> okay, so when you walked in today, you said someone died, and I need to know what that's all about. Okay, so here, let me give you the lay of the land. 
it's 12 19 right now thursday may 4th so <clears throat> about 9 30 i got a call from uh, beth franks I thought you were going to say the front desk. <laughs> Someone died. Yeah, I got a call. 9.30, I get a call from the front desk, and they're like, hey, listen, you're not going to believe this. Heads up. <laughs> Heads up. There will be a dead head rolling down. There's somebody dead in the hotel. Yeah, so um, Beth calls me and says, uh, what are you and Lola doing? Something I'm like, we're just chilling. We're sleeping, brother. And uh, Sorry, I just got paranoid. I didn't hit record. I did. Lo- so Lola did stay with you? Yeah, Lola and I had a sleepover last night. I was going to work on the vlog last night, but Lola w- wanted to stay in my room. Uh-huh. And guess what we did? Watch The Exorcist. Oh, my God. Yep. Yeah. That is not a good movie for a kid. Well, they went to Salem yesterday, and it was like Spooky. kind of, you know, we were in a, I was like, what do you want to watch? You want to watch a scary movie? Do you want to watch something funny? And she was like, oh, I kind of want to watch something scary. So we watched well, you Exorcist. The scariest movie. Hundred percent. Watching it um now though, it's because th- that was the most terrifying movie I ever saw in my fucking life growing up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't even believe how horrifying it was. I never even saw it. I saw parts of it. It was enough for me. Watching it last night holds up. It holds up well. I will say that. Some, but even some of like some of the effects now. When I see the vomit, I'm like, "That's pea soup. That is an actual pea soup they got from a can." So, is this was the old one? Where, yeah, where she says, a, "Blank me." Uh, yes, your mother sucks. Blanks in hell. Okay, so how did she respond to hearing that? It, uh, a young child like looked herself? at me and goes, "Cool." No, she actually didn't say anything. She didn't have any questions. She's probably like, we did talk shit. through it, though. Like, I was she, I was like, okay, do you kind of get what's going on? And we talked about people being possessed. And she's like, why is he having to go talk to all these people? I go, the Catholic Church runs everything. Mm-hmm. I did say that. I said something along those lines. I go, well, they got a lot of power. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's basically it. I'm like, they, they run, I go, they run everything. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I sound like a QAnon person. <laughs> so I need to dial it back. And I was like, well, not everything, but you know. Uh-huh. Well, uh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, we, we chit chatted about it. Got some snacks, went to bed way too late. Okay. So Beth calls me. Let's look at the exact, exact time. I get a little ring a ding from her. Um, 9.48 a.m. Calls me. Hey, where are you and Lola? I'm like, we're, we're laying down. And I was like, I love Gary. She was like, unlock your door. Hurry or something. Because she said on the phone, she goes, uh, someone died, I guess, down the hall. And uh, yeah. And I guess originally how she found out, she w- Beth was on the phone with Maggie. And there was all these people congregated over by the elevator, chit-chatting, just chatting it up. Oh, shit. They're all whispering, doing whatever. Beth has her on speakerphone and was like, what's going on? They were like, oh, like someone died down the hall or something. And then Beth said, she was like, oh, my God, what room? Because she thought it was us or something. I was like, (laughs) whoa, that is dramatic, but also cool. (laughs) Good to know how she'd react. She would get an obituary shirt made for me so quickly after my death. Oh, She'd call her guy. She'd be like, just called my guy. We're good. (laughs) I know she would. But so um, she told, yeah, so she said, oh, someone died or whatever down there at the end of the hall. And there's been motherfuckers walking around all day, cops everywhere, shit, you know, whatever, wild stuff. I never saw any of the cops. But what I did see when I was uh, running back down to get the tripod before we recorded, I did see two people with a stretcher walking up. And it was very awkward because I pressed the button for the elevator and they were kind of looking at me. And I was kind of looking at them, and I go, all right, I'm going to let you guys take the elevator, and it looks like I'm taking the stairs. Have a good one. (laughs) I just walked up the stairs. So they're going to wheel a dead body out. Yeah, at some point. Well, the vet that I go to, (laughs) Banfield, is where I've been going lately just because it's right by the house, blah, blah, blah. They, every time I've been there, (laughs) there's this fucking bus that shows up. It's like giving pets a proper burial and whatever and these motherfuckers come out every time with a wagon of a dog two times that i've been there and it's like you know the guy's trying to be quiet as possible do whatever and there's all these blankets it's like you know there's a dead dog in there 
Well, that's why you never got your prescription filled, because it's Banfield. <laughs> I thought you were going to a legitimate veterinarian, not a fucking Petco vet. Well, they have their own location now. Oh, they do? Yeah, so it's not in the Petco. It's like they started their own brick and mortar, just Banfield vet. It was just easy one day. They were the only fucking place I could get into. Everyone was like, yeah, we've got an appointment next week. I'm like, I don't need a fucking appointment next week. I need one now. My dog needs us now. Just take a look at his stupid fucking eye and give him some cream. That's what I want. That I need a vet and a doctor like that. I'm sick of all this call up here, make an appointment. Right. They have made it easier now, though, because, like, on the Mercy app or whatever that I have, Mm -hmm. I can send messages to the doctor. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sending tip pics, the whole deal. I mean. (laughs) I think that's against OSHA and HIPAA. HIPAA. Yeah, it's definitely against uh, FEDRA. Damn. So, but I, I just want a doctor that I can just call up, give him 50 bucks, you know what I'm saying? Just for a quick phone call. Hey, man, this is kind of what I'm working with. Can you just get, tell me if I need something or what I need to do? Do Great. I need to go to the ER or am I safe? I'll pay a motherfucker 50 bucks for that. <sighs> that was what's called a natural pause in conversation. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Libby slept for so long. Ugh. I was waiting for Tina because we were going to do this last night, and I was kind of just waiting to for us to calm down because we had eaten such a large meal. Yeah. So I'm just sitting over here like this. <laughs> <laughs> dozing I, off. I'm like, I wasn't dozing, but I was just tired. I was just like, ooh. <laughs> oh, when I walked in to record the podcast... I wish I had a photo of, I should have gotten a picture of exactly what you looked like. Because you looked ten shades lighter than you are now. And you just turned, were sitting in the chair, right? When I walked in, turned around and looked at me and go. I'm so tired. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Oh, oh yesterday I slept until like almost 3 p.m. Jesus, I wish I was doing that right now. I couldn't even believe it. No, we have two shows tonight. (laughs) I know. I know. Well, Donnie Wahlberg was here last night watching the Celtics game. Oh, is he supposed to come? Well, I I asked him. I said, hey, if you're still in Boston tomorrow, we got a show. And he goes, ah, already left. See you next time. Oh. In all, he said, in all of you, praying hands, heart. Whoa. That's really nice. It was very nice. Yeah. I mean, that's a really nice thing to say. Which means he got on a private jet after the game and flew home. So did he, was he at the game? Mm-hmm. Oh, right on. It's a playoffs game. I didn't he's realize that. Big fan. Oh, I bet he's a big Boston Celtics fan. And that's that's why all the people downtown had all those green. Yes. Green I, jerseys I, on. I was thinking, man, these people love these green jerseys. Well, there was a game. That was why. They do. And it's also in this town. So people that live in Boston love the Boston Celtics. As they should. Well, yeah, but there was just a large number. Sure. And I thought, wow, this is extraordinary or extraordinary. Uh, yeah, I would actually go with extraordinary. I'm, I don't think I would say extraordinary. Extraordinary. Um, let me pick up my... Uh, Guess what I got, y'all? After uh, that last spill I had, um, Big Tit Tracy got me another toadfish, and that's the thing that sticks, doesn't drop. So if I was to give it a little boo, you guys can't see it, can you? Can't see it. Can't see it. If I was basically, (laughs) you guys have seen how this works before. It's, um, you got to like turn it sideways and gently to pick it up. This is, it's got some bottom undercarriage that keeps it safe. (laughs) And I did not know she got that today, which means that I missed seeing Tracy. Yeah, so when we were in Kentucky, Tracy um, handed me this bad boy. I looked at her right when she goes, hey, I got something for you. I was like, oh my God, you got me a fucking another one of those spill things, didn't you? Well, we told her to bring it. Yep, and she did. And guess what? Best gal ever. Somehow. Big Tit Tracy was able to get a sticker of, look at that. That's uh, me and Libby in that (laughs) scene. And a Slop City sticker. 
a ranch sticker. She outdid herself, man. And a you're looking good today sticker. What kind of sticker establishment is she going to that has these stickers? That's what I'm saying. Is she some kind of sticker? Does she run a sticker business? Big Tit Tracy, let us know what you're doing. Didn't get to see her feel bad about that. That's the thing now. I just, I can't, um, I just can't come out there. And it's getting to be where Beth and, and Tina can't be out there because, you know, they're trying to sell merch, but they're doing a meet and greet out there. Yes, we are. We're doing like a mini meet and greet. Every at, night. Every night. I'm going to get comfy right here. And uh, Oh, yeah, that feels good. And I can't be like, oh, I'll give somebody a meet and greet because, first of all, not my show. Not my show. I can't just be giving out meet and greets. No, not like Greg and Gala and everyone. And there's a very small, I mean, there's a small amount of um, meet and greet stickers, and they're under lock and key, and I don't have access. Lock and key. Lock and key. I know. People are like, oh, can you get a, can we go buy meet and greet? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I wish we were running an establishment. Like, I'm like, <laughs> slip me 50 bucks, motherfucker. I'll take you back. Because I'd be fucking rolling. In Kashish. You can give me 50 bucks, I'll take you back, and you won't see anybody because it'll just be me sitting in a room looking like I yep. look right now. We'll just do this. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be you eating our uh, veggies and hummus back there alone. <sighs> Sometimes the veggies are good. I would say 90%. Other times the cauliflower smells like... A dead foot with a turd on it. Blow, blow, dude. I opened up one the other day, and I was feeling it. I mean, it was just like, whoo, whoo. You could just fucking smell it Ugh. immediately. And everyone's like, did someone shit? Is there a fart? What's happening? It's amazing how cauliflower can smell like actual feces. And it's white. Like, it's like this boring, almost, it's like a cream color. It seems like it's void of any any real coloring in it and then it just smells like it smells like the, the first room i was in here i switched oh. again did i tell you that huh yeah beth got mad last night and was like i'm switching your rooms why because of the cigarette smoke because lola wanted to stay with me and like beth just Beth's a bad bitch she goes sending a fucking email to the G general manager here yeah Oh, fuck. Why did I say that? Yeah, you gotta. I gotta beep that out. What time? 27.14. Okay. Oops. Started calling Rafe. Okay, um, just remember that. Uh, yeah, so Beth got mad and called the GM and all that. Like, she was, she was just not having it. So I moved back up to 2.15, which was the very first room that I went into. Really? Yeah. And, it, I mean, to be honest, it was better than the smoking room. Like, they, it seemed like they cleaned it again. I mean, it still smells like fucking mildew. The very first room that smelled like dog piss? Yeah, it doesn't smell like dog piss anymore. It smells like mildew. So, yeah. But here's the rundown of what happened in each room. Whoa. We get here, go into the room, and I'm, we're both like, oh, my God, dude, it fucking reeks. Because it, like, it smelled like a dog literally just peed all over the place. For a while. Just puddles of, of urine. For for a while. And judging off the lady that I met in the laundry room last night, some people are fucking camping out here for a while. Really? I walk into the laundry room to go put all my stuff in last night. A lady's in there, no shoes, smoking a cigarette in the laundry room. Huh? Smoking a cigarette. In the laundry room. And I, just, she looks at me, she goes, hey, I'm almost done. And I go, whoa, you're really just going for it, aren't you? She's like, huh? I was like, you're just, just smoking it up. <laughs> she just, it went over her head. She's like, yeah, I'm almost done. <laughs> Grabbing her <laughs> shit. I was like, what the fuck is this lady doing? She was smoking a cigarette inside of the laundry room, which is indoors. Yeah. She was, uh, had, she pushed the window open though. Thank God. And, uh, she, she was smoking. I would have called the police and the front office. <laughs> oh, I told the front office. I was like, Hey, this lady is just smoking cigs in the fucking laundry room. She's like, I'm going right up there. And I was like, well, she went to her room already. But then I saw the guy come to grab, uh, stuff out of the dryer. 
because that was where all their things were. So I saw him, and I looked at Lola, and I go, hey, we're going to go head down. I go, I forgot something in Libby's room, and it's at the end of the hall while I'm following this guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a snitch. I'm a narc, bro. <laughs> I'm a fucking narc. I don't care. You're getting, you, you mess with, you mess with T-ball. <laughs> You're getting fucking narked. I'm, I got no sympathy for the wicked anymore, man. So you followed this guy to see what room he was in. Yeah. And Lola goes, Libby's room is up here. <laughs> and I look at her, I go, shut up. And I was like, I looked at you like, <laughs> I did the face. I did the face that tells you I'm about to tell a lie. <sighs> and yeah, I saw their fucking room and I went downstairs and I narked on them motherfuckers. They're in there living like this is their fucking home, dude. This motherfucker had slippers on. He had his little fucking tank top. Just hey, I'm wearing a tank top. I'm wearing the same thing he was. But he just, I didn't like it. The I, audacity. I was, I was mad. And to be honest, I should have been meaner. I should have been like, what the fuck are you doing? But I didn't. I was like, ah, I don't really feel like getting in a fight with fucking Linda right now. This fucking two tan, two tone looking bitch. I love smoking. I love smoking too. But you don't smoke in the fucking hotel area. You just don't. Unless it's a smoking hotel, which there are very few. There are very few. Or less, unless you're in it like a red roof inn where everyone's a fucking crackhead. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I've smoked in a lot of hotel rooms. That were non-smoking? Yeah. Huh? But it's like it was like a trashy hotel that everybody was, you know, partying at. Did you ever have to pay the fee? Oh, I didn't rent that room. I just was in a hotel room with all these people just <sighs> smoking cigs. Okay, so the the lady that was smoking in the laundry room just had no qualms about it. Like it was just, she's just like, I'm just smoking here and I belong do, here. Do you know what she said? Was literally just looked at me like, Hey, washers, you need to use a washer? Washer's about to be free. I'm getting my stuff out. Like, excited. And I was just like. And then the clean clothes that are in there are going to smell like cigarette smoke because mm -hmm. she was smoking in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No shoes. Long. Those long bell-bottom yoga pants that were, like, dragging on the floor and, like, a colored V-neck from the mid-2000s. It was a light blue, kind of like the blue on your shirt. <sighs> And, uh, all right. So the first room you went, we got to smelled like urine. Yeah. Probably because someone had their dog in there and they just let them go potty in there. Yes. Straight ear. I mean, it was a mildewy. It was disgusting. So Tina calls and says, Hey, this room <laughs> smells like, uh, and she pauses. Pee. <laughs> oh, this room fuck. smells like pee. Can we get a different room? And they granted us a different room. <laughs> <laughs> this room smells like uh, pee. And we had so much stuff because we were going to be here for several days. Yeah, it was very inconvenient. So I go down. But the, wait, wait, we had one of those hotel carts that me and Lola had already taken every suitcase, every bag off no. of. No. So we had to put it all back on there. All right. Then we went to the other room. Had to take the stupid luggage cart into the elevator, and it never fits right. Oh, no. Libby was, like, stuck behind it. I'm <laughs> trying to pull her tit through. <laughs> it's like she's stuck by one tit. I'm just, I was just grabbing onto it, like, come on. And so much stuff that all of the suitcases couldn't even fit on there. So we had to push some of them and the luggage cart. <laughs> Annoying. Why'd you look there? I just like to make sure it's still recording. Yeah. Let me check on this Because I'm not one. using that program anymore. Oh, you're not? Why? Too it's, much? It's it's good, but it doesn't... It's good. It, it um, Because of the unstable Wi-Fis that we've been on, it doesn't stay connected, so there's little glitches where we'll go... <laughs> oh, unstable Wi-Fi. Unstable Wi-Fi. Oh, so that's in the video? I don't watch the whole video anymore. It's, it's in a couple of them. It was in my storage one and one of ours. It's not a big deal, but...
But I'm not going to pay $50 for something that's not seamless. Heck no, dude. Not not once, not never. No, and I mean, yeah, we're doing some unstable connections. We're some unstable gals with some unstable yep. Wi-Fi connections every now and then. Yep. And it lets you know, unstable connection. Unstable connections, unstable connections. Oh, great product, though, called Switcher. I accidentally thought I canceled my subscription and it charged me another 50 and I wrote back, hey, it, it, it charged me. Get me my money back. And then I looked at my account and realized that I had really canceled it. I'd only deleted it off my phone. And then I wrote back, hey, sorry about that. It was actually my fault. And he credited me anyway. Oh, what a nice guy. I know. He goes, if you, ha- if you want to use it again, let me know. Call me. Hit me up on the horn. Um, so when I went on that long road trip, uh, this is before you knew me in 2012, Yeah, I had, uh, just, I had barely any fucking money at that point. Oh, okay. And I looked at my account and I saw that I think I, I can't remember exactly, but I feel like it was Amazon. It was like when Amazon Prime was just starting. Mm-hmm. And um, I called up there and was like, try to be all tough and rough. And I'm like, hey, listen, you guys charge me. And listen, I need that 40, but you know, whatever amount. Because I was so fucking poor. And I was like, I need you to take that off. I'm like... <laughs> On the phone with fucking no shoes on, just running around yelling in a parking lot, like smoking cigarettes. I was 100% sober, but everybody mistook me as a homeless person constantly. Oh, Lord. But I've made that call before and been like, "Uh uh-uh, we're done. (laughs) I'm out of here. And then if they do give it back to you, it takes like a week. So it's like. Oh, yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Can't buy any cigarettes for a week? You kidding me? Yeah, so I got to sit there and look every single day and be like, cool, did I overdraft? I got to sell my plasma just to stay alive and get cigarettes? Yeah. Um, I also would like to make a quick <laughs> sell my plasma, <laughs> get a fucking BioLife card, start selling my plasma, <laughs> go out with my fucking buddies and pay for our drinks <laughs> with my BioLife card from selling fucking plasma. Hell yeah, I'll do that 10 out of 10 times every time. <laughs> And I'll thank BioLife every time I take that fucking shot, brother. <laughs> you boy. Ooh. <laughs> Can't do it. Jeremiah. <sighs> it hurts. Oh, I love it. Oh, yes. I love hearing your voice. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. I love Second room voice. we get to. Finally. Mm. We're there. Nice and cozy. I walk in. Smells like. A guy had walked out five minutes before and was just smoking cigs in there. Like maybe 10 at a time. Mm-hmm. Like maybe he was trying to set a Guinness Guinness World record of how many cigarettes he could fit in his mouth at once and smoke. So he had a... Yeah. Oh, all I, these cigarettes right here? Uh, <laughs> it was gone. <laughs> yeah, and his buddy put it on TikTok, but what happened <laughs> is one of the cigarettes got stuck in the back of his... Got lodged in the back of his throat, and his buddy goes, Man, he's got 500 cigarettes <laughs> in his mouth. <laughs> so that guy was in there right before we got there, and we said to the lady, we says, Look, this ain't a joke. Libby either. was like, What the fuck? Got in the room. That's what, You were just like, What the fuck? It was unreal. Oh, it smelled. I mean, and I'm a, we're both former smokers, dude. I love cigarettes. Still love them to this day. Yes. When I see a person smoking a cigarette, never once am I like, what a trashy piece of shit. I'm always like, fuck yeah, dude. You're you're killing it, bro. Yeah. See someone smoking in their car with their windows rolled up. Yeah. I wouldn't do it personally, but I ain't mad at the person doing it. Right. See a kid in the back seat and think, God, I love America. <laughs> God, I love this country. I didn't want all my stuff smelling like smoke because I worked hard to not that smell like smoke. Oh, yeah. So that's the second room. And I think, what did, did I call down? Yes. I did because Libby was like, ooh, I got to see this. <laughs> Libby walked in all fucking like nutty <laughs> professor looking ass. She's like. Getting all like, ooh. She was like, I got to sit. We got to sit down for this. She says something like, ah, this is not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> this room smells like cigarette smoke. We can't stay here. <laughs> yeah, I did start it off with, listen, I, I, I wish I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a joke. So that was our second room. 
And then we got to our third room. <laughs> and I walked in and I was like, okay, smells like cigs. And we're like, it smells like cigarettes, but at least they tried to cover it up. Yeah. There were some fragrances in the air. You know, they use a Lysol disinfectant spray up in that bitch. And then Tina got her own perfume out and sprayed it right by me. Yeah. And, um, she wasn't too happy about that. That's when uh, my sensory uh, processing disorder kicked in. And I was like, I'll be okay. 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 And I was fine. Yeah. But it was a big spray. I was just trying to help. Yeah. I was just trying to help. But it's like, once you sit in that room with the cigarettes in there, I was like, I'm used to this. But then I'd walk out, and then I'd walk back in, and I'd be like, God damn it. Fuck. That's And I'm like, it's going to get on my clothes. I guarantee it's on my fucking clothes. How did you end up getting a new room then? Because Beth went la- in there? last night, Beth and I were down at the pub watching the Boston Celtics game. Well, I was watching it and telling Beth things about the Boston Celtics, and she was like, shut up. <laughs> You're annoying. Let's look at these filters on Instagram. I was like, well, so Jason Tatum's a pretty good player. (laughs) Just saying annoying things. And then I went on for way too long about why I why I am rooting for the Boston Celtics, whatever. And I was and it. I heard myself talking, and I was just like, "You're annoying. (laughs) You're literally an annoying person. Stop talking." (laughs) That's exactly what I said in my brain. What kind of uh, beverage did you take? Be partake, partake, partake. Um, we got a. I got a shot of Jameson with a beer, a local IPA, and Beth got a local beer, a local Pilsner. So that's cool because we're in Boston, and when you're in Boston, you got to drink something like uh, Sam Adams or mm-hmm. Lining Kugel. Oh yeah, they had a Boston Lager down there. I should have grabbed one. Boston lager um i would love to go to the cheers bar but it's like we just don't have enough time you don't have enough time and i want to go see every new kids on the block former childhood home and i can't i know i i really do love boston though the vibes are fucking cool there's i just love it some of the accents i've heard are fucking wild crazy Ooh, you know what was crazy to me today and obviously it's not that i'm saying black people can't have boston accents uh-huh. but there was a lady walking by me she worked here and she we were both laughing because we both walked up the stairs and she was like okay i gotta figure out how to do the boston accent and she was like oh man i hate the stairs And I was like, what the, I was like, that is wild. Cause I guess I just decided that like, it's only like older white ladies who are like, yeah, I'm taking the stairs. That's called white supremacy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. But I heard her like thick ass Boston accent and I was cracking up. I'm like, dude, this accent is wild. The the guy at the, um, that's what it is. Stairs. The guy at the, um. Oyster Place, such a great accent. And I kept talking to him just so I could hear it more. What guy? There was a guy at the front, an older gentleman, um, when I walked in. Oh, yes. I walked in after you guys. I did see him, though, and I asked him, I go, hey, how are you? He goes, I'm good. (laughs) He was funny. Just nice, crisp, white hair. Yep. White little old man hair. But a cool one of those windbreaker sweaters that had a V-neck. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. A freaking dad at a soccer game yep. wearing a fucking cool ass V-neck windbreaker. Yep. So you know he can run and you're going to hear him the whole time he's behind you. Hey, Jimmy, get out. Get the hell out of here. Oh, man. That's not the right accent, but. It's not. It's and too I, hard. I would like to perfect it. Oh, even the waitress that came up and recognized Chelsea last night at the Oyster House. She, her accent, she was like, oh, my God, I got to get a picture with you. <laughs> like, just this, and I was it's just wild. like. wild. Yeah, dude, the accents are funny. I, I think I really do like Boston people, too, and the, the, the impression that I've always gotten from, like, movies I've watched, stand-ups I've seen, shit like that, is that they're just, like, fucking hardcore motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't give a fuck. It, even the people that were sent to the bar last night, like, they were all locals. They had, like, their Boston shit on. Like, they come to this bar, I guess, in the hotel, which is hilarious. Just to hang out? Yeah, I think so. And wow. they, were, they were fucking cool, dude. They were like, oh, this fucking guy. You know, just saying, <laughs> just saying Boston stuff. Oh, God, I wish we had longer time. I know, because I would really love to see it, like, hardcore. 
But the Boston accent, like you think a Long Island accent is crazy. I think Boston's it's, more nuts. It's wild, dude. What am I looking at? I'm just looking. I can't get over. Oh, so here's why we switched rooms. I told, I walked downstairs after I put a, our laundry in. And Beth is like, I told Beth, I'm like, dude, this fucking lady's smoking cigs in there while I'm doing laundry. And Beth goes, okay, I've had enough. And she gets up. She was like, I'm moving. You're, you're moving rooms. Okay. I'm going to go get you a new room. And she was like, it's just, this is fucking crazy. This is bullshit or whatever. And I was just like, the, the people at the front desk told me, they're like, people do not care. They will smoke. They don't, they do not care. And I'm like, that's like a big fee. And they're like, yeah, but they don't, they just do it. No matter what, I would try. I would up the fee to three hundred dollars or a thousand. Literally, what I said to the lady, I go, "Why don't you try doubling that fee, putting it up at three hundred? Because one hundred fifty is like, mm, if it's cold out and you don't want to go outside smoking, I'd say that's worth it. Three hundred, I I would think twice about even two fifty because usually it's like a two hundred and fifty dollar cleaning fee. Yeah, it's like a rental car, like the right. fucking fees four hundred dollars or something like that. Have I smoked in rental cars before? Yeah, of course I have. Whoa, that's yep. hardcore. Roll down the windows, ride it out, and then I get some Ozium. That was when I was a heavy smoker though, and I was like, ain't nothing getting in the way of me smoking the cigarette. Even me, a heavy smoker, and I rented cars recently. And I will get out of the car and roll up the windows because I don't want the smoke that I've been outside smoking get in and then make them think I smoked in there. Yeah. The time that I did it, it was summertime. So I rolled down the windows, rolled open the sunroof, and I was like crazy careful. I was like. Oh, it doesn't matter. I know, but I thought I did. Didn't get charged, though. Oh, thank God. Yeah. What a relief. And, I mean, I understand. It was disrespectful. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I'd say I'd go in. I'd go so far as to say I should have been prosecuted. You should have been prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Yeah, like they say, well, you have to buy this car now. You smoking it? You have to buy it. I should have been read my Miranda rights. Yep, right when I get there, they say, "Ma'am, we need you to put your hand on this Bible." And I'm like, "Wait a second, grab something that I believe in." And I say, "Why would you just? Why don't we get a pizza for me? Most pizza down the street, it's the best <laughs> pizza in St. Louis. Why don't we get one of those? And then I'll swear on that." And then they were like, all right, cool, for sure. So I just stand there and wait for half an hour while we ordered Emo's Pizza, the whole deal. <laughs> get out of the car. And they're like, okay, swear on this Emo's Pizza. I was like, wait, let me get a bite. And then we started eating the pizza and they forgot. And Really? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing went my way. That checks out. I'm a lucky person. I mean, that's if there's one thing I'm known for, it's luck. I'm so tired of can't even sing a song. Oh yeah, we're driving down the streets of Boston. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Making our way downtown. Here I get it, yeah. An oyster house. We love to eat oysters. Just kidding, only Tina does. But last night she tried a clam and didn't like it. Oh yeah, driving down the streets of Boston. Uh. Dorchester, our Uber driver won't go there anymore. Even though he loves the new kids, but he got robbed two times. He was robbed twice. That was driving down the street to Boston. <laughs> My dad, sent, Igor, sent me a text and was just like, this uh, song you guys do, improv song, is really good. It could be like regular. So I don't remember what he said, but I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. That's literally what we've done every episode. I was so tired. I couldn't road. even do it. No. Um. Driving down the streets of Boston. <sighs> Here's what I want to know. Is why the two of us have been accosted by people who will not stop, stop talking. talking. Two times it's in Tina. a row. Because Tina puts out the vibes just like my sister where she wants to chit chat. I don't put it out anymore because I don't want to talk to people. Do you think that's what it is? Yeah. Okay. You're putting out the good feeling 
friendly vibes. Let's chit chat. Hey, bud, how you doing? Oh, th- all right, thanks. All right, give me some eggs over here. Okay. All right. Oh, I like these. You make these eggs. Those are good eggs. <laughs> then the lady told us her whole life story. Oh, God. Talking about how she wants us to feel like we're at home. It was a very nice message in the beginning. You know, she does breakfast at hotels, and that's been her job for a long time. And she was fucking good at it. And she loves she, it. And she, she loves people it. to feel like it's their home. Yes. Very nice sentiment. But didn't stop. She noticed that I was rubbing my knee just because I rub my knee when I sit. And I got knee problem too, you know, very hard. But I still work here for 25 years, working hard. Uh, my husband say, oh, don't work. And I mean, just going on Oh, and dude, on and telling on. us about her husband, telling us about her kids her in kids. college. <sighs> One, I mean, just going on and on and telling on. Telling us about repeat customers she's had that will come back and say, oh, you still work here? Yeah, it's like, no, they didn't. You're telling me Dan, CEO from Minneapolis. Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. A CEO would not stay here. Oh, no. He would check out immediately. He would literally walk in, sniff, turn around, and leave. He'd be out of here. And that's no disrespect to our tour manager, Beth, who books these hotels. Not at all. Not, not disrespect Just at all. Just want to be clear on that. But... I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a, most of the places nice. we stay are fucking great. They're wonderful. And I'm not trying to be some bougie bitch who's like, yeah, now that I'm on tour, I get to bitch about hotels. And everyone that listens to my podcast is like, I haven't been in a hotel in years. Why is she talking about this? Why is she acting like Tom Segura talking, hating on poor people? <laughs> like what the fuck? Or fat people. Yes, that too. And it's like, no, I'm just telling y'all about what I've been well, we've it's been just doing. our experience and our reality right it's now. It's just our experience and our strength and hope. I'm sharing my experience, strength, and hope with all of you, okay? That's what they used to say in AA about something. It's like you share your experience, strength, and hope with people. And I'm like, well, what if I don't have any of those three things? You're like, first of all, how many cults do I have to be in in my lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can, I, can we just... Can, can we, I not be in another cult? Can we cap it at two? <laughs> Let's cap it at two. You know, I did just join the Taylor Swift fan club. Really? Yeah, online. What'd you get for it? Nothing. Got a cool uh, email that said, so cool to see you here. Or did Taylor like herself send it? Um, I'm hoping that it did come from her. So I did send up a follow-up email. And I was like, hey, what's the parking situation going to be like at your show <laughs> July 7th in Kansas City? And what time I've been to open? Arrowhead so many times because I'm a season ticket holder. But also, I just want to make sure, like, what's the right way to go about this? And also, do you have any meet and greets for sale? I could totally send you, like, 100 bucks and get it all mm-hmm. up in your stuff. And um, it sent back Mailer Demon. Mailer Demon, yeah. Yeah, Mailer Demon. So I guess it wasn't Taylor. Yeah, probably not. Did it come from taylorswift at gmail.com? <laughs> where did it come from? Let me look. <laughs> oh, that's where those went. I was looking for those. Those were some uh, moist tell us. Got a pretty cool uh, spam email yesterday. It was. It came from Bill, capital B-I-L-L. Uh-huh. Subject was Bill, B-I-L-L, capital. And the actual email was a screenshot of a PayPal thing that said, oh. it was a JPEG, and it said, uh, had the, PayPal logo. It said your account has been charged four hundred and fifty eight dollars. Go to pay. Go to this link now and into your password. And I'm like, you ain't getting me, Bill. Mm-mm. I ain't listening to no motherfucker. Capital name Bill. I was like, look, you ain't even trying, bro. You're sending a JPEG. Yeah, like this shit's pixelated, bro. You think I don't know what's going on? It was this small. Oh, it was a tiny guy. It was small, and then my email, you know, was like this big, but the. Fake PayPal thing was this small. Yeah. When there's differing fonts or I can tell that it's like something translated into English that was like incorrect, I'm like, not today. I ain't answering this. <laughs> think I, You think you're going to get me? You're not. The real dinger was it was sent to like 30 other undisclosed recipients. Oh, my God. I thought, how could all of us been charged the same amount? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, wait a second. <laughs> Who are these undisclosed recipients? Maybe I should ask them. And how many of these undisclosed recipients are going to accidentally enter their password into this phishing scheme? Oh, probably half. I'm sure half to. That's what y'all get. Yep. I mean, if you're getting fished by uh, an email like that. Mm-mm. From Bill? Bill? Yeah. I've, there's, they've, they've almost got me a couple times, not where I'm like entering my password, but I see him and I'm like, huh, what do I have from PayPal? And then it, it's always PayPal. 
It's always something shady mm-hmm. with PayPal. They want your PayPal. Yeah. I remember this one scheme. It was a few years ago. It said, we know your password is, and it was my password. Okay. And if you don't do something, we're going to send out all these videos of you. Ooh. And then I thought, at the time, I didn't have any. So I was like, I got real scared at first. I'm like, they know my password, and they're going to send out videos. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even actually have any videos. You're like, oh, you mean that video of me farting the other day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean that video I took of all my shits <laughs> in one location? <laughs> You mean that picture I took of the largest turd that ever came out of my butt that was just in the toilet? Today, Libby sent me a picture of her Chipotle. (laughs) That she she got delivered to the house. And I am not, because I only saw the preview of it because I was on my MacBook. And I was like, she did not send me a picture of her shit in the toilet. Oh my god! I was like, really? She did not. Oh god! You there thought it was no- shit? I literally did when I saw the preview. I was like, "That fucking bitch! That's disgusting." I got Chipotle, man, and as uh, soon as I went to grab it out of the bag, it was so light, and I thought, "There's no way a burrito bowl can be this light." It, it was as light as a feather. And when I pulled back that aluminum num top. And all it was was chicken and queso. Oh, I almost fucking puked looking at the picture. Right when you said something, oh my God, this is how it came, whatever. I'm like, what the fuck? That's literally criminal. What the fuck? And what'd you ask for? Lettuce, rice, all the stuff? All of it. And I didn't even ask for al pastor chicken. I asked for regular chicken. Oh my God. What kind of sociopath so, is ordering just chicken? So and the queso? first time I went in to get my money back, it was going to give me five dollars back. So I had to go all the way back out and come back in and say like it didn't even deliver it to me because I was saying like it's not the right thing or missing ingredients. It was only going to give me five dollars. So I had to go back out and say I didn't even get it, which was a lie. Yeah, but did they give it back to you? Yeah, eighteen dollars of it. Ugh. So I paid. 24 something for chips. Yeah. I mean, fuck. And I'm so hungry. Ugh. I can't I know. stand their asses. I can't stand DoorDash. I can't stand the food people that send through DoorDash. It's not DoorDash's fault. They didn't make the food. No, it's just all fucking annoying. Like, Chipotle should have called and said, Do you really just want chicken with fucking queso? Well, you know, we're charging you $20 for this, right? Yeah. You're getting charged $20 for this they ain't calling you they ain't calling you back i might be getting something from the little restaurant here i mean oh god libby's so mad fuming about it i i can't believe the amount of money i spent yeah it's just not fair wish i had a car man would i go and get something no but i'd sit here and think about it for a while i got a fast car you got a plan to get us out of here gonna make a convenience store (laughs) Not what she says. I just, I, I just wish it was that we could just get correct orders. Is that asking too much? Especially when I'm paying sixty something dollars when my for sauce, one meal when my sauce isn't in there at a place and and I do not get mad when people double check when I when I'm waitressing and they double check like hey are all my ranches in there I will literally be like yes I put eight ranch in there and I tell them exactly what I put and if they 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 give me any grief I I'll show them the bag brother look in the bag my man right here look in there see what's up and they'll look and then they'll look and they'll be like great job yep they go (laughs) this is them looking every time (laughs) <laughs> looking like a fucking little squirrel and then you send them on your you give them a little pat on their butt when they walk out like Ch-ch-ch. oh i'll do whatever i don't give a fuck i'm serious about my sauce so i am very i am very very serious about it even the way i package it into go stuff i don't like putting it next to all the stuff it's gonna get hot mm-hmm. i like putting it in a little baggie mm-hmm. and then it can be there or if i do put it in the box i put it under the paper so it's not gonna get all grody that and get sense. melted and fall that's the worst you order a fucking thing of buffalo wings and they just toss the fucking sauce in there with your buffalo wings and now the the lid has melted oh and there's ranch pouring onto your wings which it's like yeah i'm gonna use that ranch later but i didn't want it like this at your own discretion i wanted it at my own discretion 
you want to be able to put the amount you want on there. There's nothing more that I fucking hate than when I get a uh, uh, thing of wings or something like that where I got some sauces and the lid melts because they just plopped it right on top of it. And not only that, but now you're 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 eating you're ingesting melted plastic. Yeah, which is mixed with your buffalo sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I try to not think about that part. Just uh, enjoy the wings. But yeah. Um, how did you spill, how did you spill your coffee in the non-spill cup? Um, honestly, I think I just straight, like, did one of these. Oh, good God. There's just no, there's no product for you that will prevent you. Where'd you get that coffee? Downstairs. Free? Free. They got coffee or, or, I mean, cream or. Yeah, they have French vanilla, hazelnut, and half and half. Yep, needed a coffee. Got it. I'm going down there right after this. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. Uh Uh-uh. I don't either. If somebody says, hey, don't go down there and get coffee, I'll say, hey, I'm doing what I want. If you're going to smoke in here, lady, I'm going to go get a coffee. Yeah, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a few cups for the road. Yep. And some lids. Yeah. For my sunflower seeds. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Uh Uh-huh. We're smoking in the rooms like it's no big deal, yeah. Boston Celtics win one, one and one against Philadelphia. Donnie Wahlberg was at the game yesterday. Did yeah. you see him on the TV? Oh yeah, we love Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heading down to the Wilbur. Oh, yeah, baby, Boston is my friend, yeah, ooh, I love it. Take a little globe and get a Boston globe trotter. oh, ooh, yeah. Got that one from Boston, yeah, the Boston globe trotters. <laughs> They're from Boston. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We love you, Boston. I forgot that the Boston Globetrotters are from Boston. You know what I'm actually thinking is, is, is it the Harlem Globetrotters? <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's the Harlem Globetrotters. <laughs> We're the stupidest people in the world. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh God. The Bo- we gotta end this podcast right now. <laughs> the Boston, Boston Globe Trotters. It sounded right. Though. It sounded really right. I mean, we we do have to end because it's time. But man, the Globe Trotters were uh, such a cool group of people. Oh my god, it was like a freaking party up in that bitch. No matter what. <laughs> wow. It's like yeah, line up, guys. We're about to do the fucking Mambo Number Five. Like <laughs> they're about to do the coolest thing you've ever seen. On <laughs> they're a- about to do a synchronized <laughs> dance, and then someone's gonna do a backflip and make a three. <laughs> like what? Huh? All right, guys, give it up for the Boston Globetrotters. That is uh, that's it, Boston Globetrotters. That's what happens when they come on the field. That's what happens when. Nothing. Yeah. All right. Love y'all. Driving down the streets of Boston. Ah. Bye. Love you. Cut. Cut.